I've played a lot of PS1 games, and for a system that was incredibly powerful, it sure had some janky games. That's the topic of today's video, 10 games that made me want to sleep in a reactor core. Now bear in mind, these are not the worst games on the PS1, they're just 10 games that made me want to stand outside in a thunderstorm wearing a suit of armor. Let's begin. When I was a kid, my sister was the person who had the PS1. I had the PS2. Thankfully, I grew up with that because my sister only had two games, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Croc. Croc 1 was a slippery, asinine, wannabe platformer that was genuinely a good time. It was a good time waster. Croc 2, it was the same with only minor changes. And if you've played it, it's a lot like other platformers at the time, like Spyro. Also, they decided to add this stupid abstract control scheme called the Omni Control, where two people could split control over Croc's movements. These include attacking, jumping, camera inventory, and more. The levels are boring, they just tend to drag on, and it's grossly unremarkable as a game. It's hilarious that this was supposed to be a Yoshi game. Thank God it wasn't. Way back when, GTA was a top-down game. We all know this. Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2 were made in this fashion, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. The issues I had with the game itself consisted of the gameplay. Now, usually, in the game, the idea is to answer the phone, go to an area, do the requested mission, return to that area, and get paid. Once you hit a money threshold, you move on to the next city. These cities are the usual suspects, Vice City, Liberty City, and San Andreas, and they each have their own style of vehicles, people on the streets, and individuals that you work for. The concept is simple, and I do appreciate that, but controlling anything in this game is like controlling a rhino on a unicycle. More often than not, the frame rate will go to absolute dog shit, and God forbid you fail a mission because you won't be able to repeat it, and then you have to struggle to figure out how to make money by doing dumb stuff for five hours before you give up and move on. I personally own the GTA Director's Cut, which has the London expansion, and I'm kind of pissed that I can't get past the nonsense of Grand Theft Auto 1 to check it out. Now obviously Grand Theft Auto 1 is still around, and we've been waiting for years for GTA 6. Supposedly it will come out within the next four years. I guess that the GTA 5 wellspring finally dried out. Eminem Shell Shocked is a direct ripoff of Crash Bandicoot, no more, no less. You basically play as the yellow Eminem trying to escape the Eminem minis, but for me, this game wishes it controlled like Crash Bandicoot. The jump arches are shallow, the controls are slidey, and this was 100% a game that your mom found in a bargain bin because she forgot it was your birthday two years ago and then proceeds to tell you that you're adopted. If you like M&Ms and want to savor the flavor of tasty chocolate candies, keep this one out of your home. Trust me. I really wanted to like this game because I love Resident Evil games based on principle, always have. The game is a major departure from what we know in Resident Evil in that it is a light gun game from the first person perspective. Now in Japan, this game was compatible with the gun con. In the United States, it wasn't. Now I don't know the actual truth or if it's just a gaming myth, but supposedly Capcom USA didn't want to have gun support due to the Columbine Massacre. I guess it doesn't matter, the game is playable with just the controller. In the game we play as an amnesiac helicopter pilot who wakes up in Raccoon City after his helicopter crashes and then proceeds to face an onslaught of zombies. You get a plethora of weapons and you walk. That's it, you just walk towards enemies and occasionally you shoot them. But what the game doesn't tell you is that the final boss is a total cock! To this day, after trying to beat it four months, I have been unable to kill this boss because he is a total bullet sponge. I've saved nearly every bullet, grenade, everything I could to beat him, and I just couldn't. He ate all the ammunition, and he will kill you in like three hits. It's very subpar, and you should avoid it. I love the Strike series. I've actually released a series slayer on it. Feel free to check it out. Soviet Strike, much like many of the other Strike games, are helicopter combat games where you do a set amount of mini-missions inside of a standard level. Think five objectives that pop up, and usually the sixth is a surprise that you have to react to or face failing the level and doing it all over again. 
While you're contending with that, you need to watch your fuel, and also watch out for enemies that will inevitably come after you. This series demands a lot of planning and tactical approaches to objectives, and I actually enjoy the Genesis games, but Soviet Strike? Different ball game for me. The graphics are wonderful, the FMVs are cool, but your fuel economy in this game is dreadful. Also, the over-the-shoulder camera means that you'll almost never see what's blasting you out of the sky. Now, personally, I did use cheat codes for this and powered through it because that restricted view sucked the fun out of the game like a singularity of a black hole. I have no clue how this game got off the assembly line, I honestly don't. This is a wrestling game based on the show of the same name, MTV Celebrity Deathmatch. And in the game we have characters that we all should know, like Ron Jeremy, all members of NSYNC, Tommy Lee, Busta Rhymes, Carrot Top, popular people from pop culture at the time. Now I'm all for wrestling games, but this one in particular I could not figure out for the life of me, even with a manual. The game is crude, illogical, and a nightmare when it comes to controls. It's like the game reads your input and says, No man, you didn't get, you didn't get the Marsh badge. I'm not going to do what you want. This is probably, in my opinion, one of the top 10 worst PS1 games. And that's saying a lot because I never make a reference to top 10 anything in my videos. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, A Twitch in Time is a generic platformer based on the hit television show. I feel bad that Melissa Joan Hart even has to associate herself with this because it's hilariously unplayable. I don't remember much about the plot, but if I recall, Salem lets out an ancient horror by being a cat and knocking down a clock, and Sabrina needs to travel to all of these worlds to put this metal potato man back into his portal. You do this by walking around and picking up gems with a Scooby-Doo style run cycle that feels like you're running barefoot on marble with Crisco on your feet with the intention of finding all the pieces of the clock. Now I don't know what crack the developers were smoking, but it was some potent stuff because this game is a dreadful time. Is throughout the school, everybody believes that we just have to figure out how to do it. Uh, and the how to do it is the next thing. You ever have like important people in your life try to be cool, like the principal or a parent or maybe even a teacher, you know, hip with the kids? This game is a result of that, or more so the entire franchise company is a result of that. Lightspan Entertainment decided that the best way to teach kids stuff would be to create edutainment games that would be released for the PS1 and placed inside of schools. Now when I say games, I mean like 12 disc games. One that comes to mind is The Secret of Google, which isn't that bad. Then we have Every Child Can Succeed, which was created for teachers, administrators, and school board members. In other words, it's an eight disc seminar. An eight disc seminar. Seminar. That is to say, a video, that is to say, a lesson, something you would probably get college credit for, on the success of inner city children in schools across America and how to implement it. That's the entirety of this game, an eight disc seminar. Fuck's sake. This game is a fever dream, literally. That's the entire premise. Basically, Osamu Sato, a Japanese artist, decided to create contemporary art on the PlayStation. Notice how I said art, not a game. LSD Dream Emulator is a, is a, is a work of art. They did this by taking a dream diary from an employee of Asmic Ace Entertainment, Hiroko Nishikawa. This guy kept a journal for 10 years, and he had some fucked up dreams. And every single one of those fucked up dreams ended up in the game. These dreams can consist of different environments, waterfalls, jumps of faith, bloody walls, enemies that walk up and touch you, decomposing bodies, a person hanging from a light pole. You never really know what's going to happen. After you complete a dream, it gets marked on a chart with the elements of upper, downer, and dynamic or static. Certain actions will cause these values to increase. Like if you force the dream to end by jumping to your death, you get a downer value. Now there's a huge community that still to this day kind of investigates the game, but for the most part, nobody's found a method or madness to it. The game is through and through an art project, so in between certain days, and if you block off certain blocks on the graph, you get these incredibly unsettling visuals that are apparently art. Here's one of them.
exciting. Also, this game is rare as hell. It's like $800 to $1,000 on average. And if you think this is weird, Osamu Sato did a few other art projects that were subpar games as well, such as Eastern Mind, The Lost Souls of Tong Nao. I didn't expect much from this game when I played it, and I'm glad I didn't because it's a stupid game. You would probably think, hey, this is probably like the movie, and I can't wait to sing Where are you Christmas? Why can't I find you? Why does this game suck dick? Basically, you play as the Grinch who is inventing these dumb gadgets to ruin Christmas, pulling pranks on people by saying, You are Grinched! Which is apparently the Grinch's catchphrase in this game. And your blueprints get blown into five of the most monotonous levels I have ever had to deal with in my life. The controls are rigid, the graphics are exceptionally subpar, and to pad the levels a bit, they even added gratuitous amounts of backtracking just to waste your time. So, at the end of it, I was like, Hey, do I get to steal Christmas now? Huh? I get to go to Whoville and steal all their presents? No, you get to be a domestic terrorist and shoot Santa out of the sky before crashing him into a snowbank and leaving him for dead face down in the snow. Then you awkwardly listen to a chorus of Welcome Christmas, and then game over. You win. You proud of yourself? I'm proud of you. These games are, in my opinion, some that you should avoid on the PS1, but do you know any that should be avoided yourself? Feel free to mention them down in the comments section below. Also, if you don't mind, hit that like button and the subscribe button because I would personally love to have you join me on my retro gaming journey. As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes. Fortify out.